Hey YouTube, <clears throat> I, um, I'm gonna be tying a blowtorch for you. It's actually, now when you're looking at this blowtorch, you're gonna say, wait a minute, that's not a blowtorch. Um, this is actually uh, Devin Olson's improved blowtorch. He's, actually, he's changed the recipe. Um, if you see the, the, um, the recipe section in the back of his book, Tactical Fly Fisher, he actually, this is the way he ties it. Um, I've seen one video on the internet of him tying it this way, um, and it was at a fly show that, uh, that somebody had filmed him. But uh, every video that you, that you see actually uh, is the old way he tied it with the, uh, this is a fire fluorescent tail. He uses a sulky rib, and then he's got a uh, fluorescent orange collar. But this is how he ties it now. He, uh, he, he, he likes Lance Egan's red darts, so he took what he liked about Lance Egan's red dart and what he likes about the blowtorch, and he mashed them together, as he says it. Uh, so you can see it's, uh, it's got a shrimp pink collar with a red, uh, using red thread, and he replaced the sulky rib, and he uses red UTC wire. So this is a great fly. Um, I don't try to reinvent the wheel. I think these guys, um, whether it's uh, George Daniel, Lance Egan, or Devin Olson, they uh, spent a lot of hours on the water, and uh, I'll let them do all the due diligence on uh, flies uh, and uh, tell me whether or not it works, and then I'll just copy theirs. So, um, but the, what I'm going to tie, there's a million tying videos on the internet, but what I want to do is, they don't... There's a couple, like Tim Camisa, he's awesome. He really talks about Sean Holsanger, he, or Holsinger. Uh, he talks about technique. Um, and this prompted me, I saw a uh, blowtorch tied um, on YouTube and um, it, it was, um, I, and I appreciate people tying their own flies, but uh, it was really an awful <laughs> bug. Uh, all the techniques, literally every technique he used was wrong. And, um, you know, if you want to learn something, you need to learn proper technique. And if you're learning wrong technique, you're just always going to tie it wrong. So uh, I'm just going to kind of walk you through. This honestly is a three-minute tie, uh, maybe four tops, some kind of anal. Um, so this video is going to be longer, but I just want to walk you through the steps and talk about how to do certain things and what not to do. But you, one of the big things that I see people do is... Everything is big and bulky. It's the thread size they use is too large. Uh, they put too much dubbing on. They have this huge uh, hot spot in the front that takes up a third of the fly. Um, and just big and bulbous. And flies, when you look under rocks in the river, all flies are very, very thin. I live on the East Coast. The biggest fly we have here is probably the golden stone fly. They're broad on top, but they're still very, very thin. So. Lance Egan says it, Devin Olson says it, George Daniel says it, thin to win. So when you're tying, just always keep in your mind, thin, thin, thin. And if it doesn't look right, you can always back it up, okay? Take something off and redo it. So we're gonna start out UTC 70 red. Uh, it's a thin uh, thread, you can flatten it. Um, you can use a 16 knot Vivas, you can use an 80 Uni. Uh, I like this. I use all those threads. but So you can see I cut the excess off right away. I put the thread on and I cut it off right away. You see a lot of guys, a lot of good tires will say, well, you got to build this dam up to seat the bead. You don't really have to do it because you'll see, I think it adds unnecessary bulk, um, but you'll see that uh, as you progress the fly towards the end, it's going to actually end up seating the bead. So I don't think it's a step you need to do. Uh, the next step is the tailing fiber. We're gonna use Glowbrite number five. It's a fire fluorescent orange. Uh, one of the things I see people do, I think they make the tails on uh, tag nymphs too large. Um, I see people say, well, double it and then double it again. I think you just need to double it and then take one and move it backwards so it's just three, okay? So cut that. Now, counterclockwise spin your thread. What that's gonna do, it flattens the thread, 
so it's going to jump backwards. It won't go this way. So we're going to, you see that how it just jumped backwards? And now look, we're just going to take the tailing fiber and we're just going to go down the hook shank one time and it's in. What I see people do is they'll lay this base of thread, they'll go down the hook shank, and then they'll go up the hook shank, they'll put in the tailing fiber, they'll go down the hook shank and bank back up. It's like three or four times. You only need to do it one time, that's it. It keeps everything thin. It's bare, I mean, it's thin, look at it. We're gonna cut the fibers, put the scissors right even with the back of the hook, cut it there, it's this nice little tag. I really like that. The next step, uh, we're going to be using UTC red wire. This is a small, Devin actually says brassy. Um, now, uh, I am going to watch what I do. The thread is flat. I'm going to go one, two, three turns. I'm right back behind the bead, and I didn't add any bulk because the thread was flat, and once again, it's thin. I'm going to take the wire. I'm going to put it in the slot of the bead, and now we're going to run the wire back down to the end. All right? I always turn the fly like that to let the thread hang straight down. That way it's not going to bump into the point and break the hook, or uh, break the thread, I should say. The next step is I'm using, uh, I believe it's pronounced Seabay fine diamond dubbing. It's a dark peacock. You can use regular ice dub. This is an ice dub, but um, uh, uh, most people use hairline. Hairline's very coarse. It's great dubbing. I use it all the time, but I really like this for bodies. I think it dubs on a lot nicer. One mistake I see people do a lot is they take a bunch of dubbing out like that and for whatever reason, they just put it all on the hook. They, when they look at YouTube videos, it always looks like every dubbing noodle is three inches long when um, it's only about an inch and a quarter long. Uh, so, but people put all this dubbing on and for some odd reason, they, they, they're like committed to it and they gotta wrap it all over the hook. Um, and then it just ends up this big bulbous mess. But, but just like I said, uh, um, thin to win and less is always more. So take all this dubbing and then just pull some fibers out. That's really not that much, okay? Now, you don't need to wax your thread. You can either use the, the uh, just the sweat from your hands or you can just lick your fingers and it's gonna get on there fine, okay? Now, you see that? That's too much, I can already tell it's too much. You see these fibers going left and right? You can just simply take your scissors, no big deal. And instead of plucking it all off, you can trim it. And now it's just gonna dub on so much nicer. That is very thin. That is a really thin noodle. Now, that noodle right there, probably an inch and a quarter. It's not three inches, not a lot. You can see it's barely bigger than the thread, which is what you want. Now, dub it on there. See how nice that is? Look at that. This is a size 14 hook. I had about an inch and a quarter worth of dubbing and it went right up to just behind the bead. Not quite all the way to the bead, but just behind it. So we're gonna counter rivet one, two, three, four, five, two, three, helicopter that off. Now you see how thin that is? Still nice and thin. Next thing we're going to do, Devin does this, and I really like this. It's a great idea. Um, this is about, once again, too much dubbing. I'm going to make a little bump behind, just at the front there, that's about a half, an, not even a half an inch of dubbing, okay? We're gonna make a little bump right there, 
And what that's gonna do is when we put our CVC feather on, it's gonna flare out the feather. It's gonna look really nice. Now, the next step is, this is a dark khaki CVC feather. Um, you can use brown, you can use uh, tan, um, anything like that. I, I, I like this. I like to stick with the browner uh, colors. I think it looks really good. One thing that you need to do is do not put the feather in like that. Strip one side, and the reason you want to strip one side is once you start tying it, you're just tying the bare quill to the hook shank. You're not going to have all this matted down hair, and then you're just going to have these nice fibers pop out. A lot of people think that, you know, I've seen pictures, they show the wet fly, they show the wet CDC fly, and the CDC is back against the body as, as if that's how it looks in the water, and it doesn't. It goes through the water with the fibers out. So just like anything, the theme is less is more. You don't need to have a bunch of fibers. It actually starts overwhelming the fly. So just put that in, all right? Now we're gonna take our hackle pliers and you just, we're gonna wrap around in front of that bump. What did I do? Two. I think I went around two and a half times. So I usually go two behind, then one in front. It, it'll lock it down. I think that's the perfect amount of CDC right there. The next step is we're going to use UV shrimp pink ice dub, and we're going to put a little collar up front. Once again, not a lot. That is barely a half an inch. It's not a half an inch. Just a th very thin. Now we're gonna go one. Look at that, it actually went, I think, one and a half times around. Now, people right here, for whatever reason, they wanna do eight uh, whip finishes, and then they wanna put some varnish on it, or, or UV or something like that. You don't need to do that. You can build like a one, two, three. A little bit of the red is poking out. This is the greatest thing to use to finish flies off. It keeps bulk down to a minimum. Just put a little super glue on. That wasn't a lot. One, two times around. Then I'm gonna do one, two whip finishes, boom. It is not coming apart. Cut it. Now, you can see the feathers are really long and you've seen this a million times. You just take, I like the feathers going back to about the tail, maybe slightly longer, slightly shorter, it's okay. Either way, but just pinch them. Just grab them and just Pinch, grab, pinch. Now, <clears throat> it looks pretty good, but there's a few long fibers, so I'm just gonna take my scissors and pop it in there and just trim them off, but not flush. I just kind of stick them in there, so. So there you go. There's one little long one there, boom. There you go, that's the blowtorch right there, right there. Great bug, and this is how it goes through the water. Once again, keep everything thin, thin to win. Don't overdub. When you put too much on, take it off, cut some off. You can always add. And when you put it on and you start wrapping up the shank, if you notice, God, it looks too bulbous, it looks too much, back it off, take some off, and go forward again. But just keep practicing. This is a great bug. That's a great tie, by the way. <laughs> I hope this helps. Um, uh, you can uh, leave some comments if you like. I'm happy to help out. Uh, but once again, this is the blowtorch. This is Devin Olson's 
improved blowtorch. This is the recipe exactly uh, to a T that he uses, and it's a great bug. But all of these techniques apply to every bug, whether it's a paragon, thin to wind, whether it's a pheasant tail, thin to wind, etc. Uh, and you can see, by the way, as I moved up the fly, the bead ended up getting seeded. So hope this helped. Tight lines, everyone. See you later.